Hey guys, Plays in Green here with another tutorial, or Sean as you know me as. Uh, this time I'm going to do it on the clone stamp tool. Um, it's something that can be really useful and I think a lot of you um, would need, like kind of need to know, understand it more and what it can do and how it can really help you create more backgrounds. Um, if you ever see Sonorian designs or uh, d guards they they have very nice backgrounds usually with their courts and their fields and I'll give you kind of what I mean I'm not going to show you exactly what they do but I'll show you some of the things they probably do to get their backgrounds so first I'm going to explain to you what the clone tool is and what it does uh, the clone tool is used to copy pixels from one part of the screen to another so the way you use the clone tools, you select this here, this little thing, make sure on the clone stamp tool, not the clone pattern tool. And you can hit Alt, and that's where you make a selection and you click. So I'm going to click on Durant's face, and it will give you a preview of what you are currently selecting. And when you hold down, and you hold down and just kind of make whatever shape you want it will copy that exact all those pixels right over here in the same image it's kind of cool and once I show you some things you can do with it it really becomes in handy so some of the settings you want to have when you do the clone tool one is you never want to use the clone tool on the same layer that you're cloning things because then once you get far into something you can't undo past changes so what you want to do is after you select your clone tool and you have your, I use a feathered brush almost all the time when I use a clone tool, and you want to change it from current layer to current layer or below, and I wouldn't really use all layers because then it's affecting everything above you and below you. Usually you're just going to be working with the current and below. And what you're going to do is create a new layer, so you have this blank layer, and like I said, you hold the alt, you make your selection, and then you just hold down the the uh, the mouse and you just whenever you want to stop you just let go and you have your all your pixels have transferred from one part to the other duplicated so I'm going to show you something that we can kind of do with it this is going to look kind of funny so we're going to select Kevin Durant's face and we're going to put it on Russell Westbrook's so let's see how this comes out here All right, looks a little small. <laughs> and now <laughs> we're gonna select. We're gonna have to make a new layer, and we're gonna select Russell Westbrook's face because we have to do current and below. So that way we're not selecting Kevin Durant's face, which is on Russell Westbrook. And we're gonna take Russell Westbrook's face. So let's see. We'll hit Alt, select. And there's our preview. I don't know if I like what I see right now. But let's see what happens. <laughs> There we go, we got Russell Westbrook's face on KD's and KD's on Russell's. Um Yeah, that looks really weird. Let's let's get rid of this. So that's like something you can do, it's kinda interesting. Um some other settings in here in this clone stamp tool. If you want to pull up the settings, they're right here next to the clone tool, this little where the tool is. You can get rid of the show overlay, which is where it'll show you your preview. So like watch when I select here. It shows my preview. I get rid of the show overlay. It won't show the preview anymore. I don't know why you do that because you kind of need that. Also, you can make multiple selections and save those selections. So let's say you have one point saved here. And you start, you know, going along, whatever. Say you want to change that selection. You click on this brush. Say you want to do right there. And you want to add, for some reason, his arm on his head. So now you have that selection there, and then when you go back to this brush, it'll immediately go back to your old selection. It's another cool little feature you can have there. Um, and everything else is just changing the brush presets and, you know, the angle and whatnot. Which is all stuff I believe I showed you all before. So let's get out of this. And... One thing you can do with the brush, with the clone tool, is create quartz like this. This is kind of what like I was talking about before, Sonorian and Degarts does. does. And what we're going to do is take this and change it into this. And this is not easy. I'm warning you all now. It takes a lot of time to make it look accurate. 
Um, even this right here, I did this in like 25 minutes. I put in a decent amount of time. I might actually use this. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I don't really use a lot of quartz in my designs. But it, uh, right, we'll get started on it. I'll show you what you kind of have to do. But you have to make sure you pay attention to detail because you want the cord to still look realistic. Like, I'll show you real quick what you don't want to do. So you don't want to go like this. Select here, right, to cover up this. Because, look, now you have pieces here that are very close and zoomed in far on the court and now they look it's like whoa why does the car go from zoomed in to zoomed out to zoomed in never happened so what you want to do is you want to keep it realistic so let's begin and we're going to cover up Carmelo here so hit the alt button select right around here we'll just keep covering up as much as we can and one thing I forgot to tell you that I'm going to show you right now is say you select here, right? And you just hold your brush, you just keep going up, and you're like, whoa, why is that happening? Like, look, his foot starts showing up. Well, these pixels, when you, I'll do it again, these pixels that were in the spot right here don't register until you unclick. So you have to keep continuously clicking sometimes and not just holding it all the way through. So let's get rid of LeBron's foot now here. There we go. Let's start getting rid of Carmelo's. All right, and this is where it gets tricky. You see we have this three-point line, and we want to keep this three-point line intact. We don't want to get rid of it because then it's not going to look realistic. Let's see, I could have probably done, done a better job here because it still looks kind of zoomed in. Let me just... Oops. Computer's freezing up. Let me select some of this here. All right. That's okay. All right, so we're going to select this three-point line. You're going to try and copy it as accurately as you can over it. So let's select this side now. It's not perfect. I did a much better job in the first walkthrough I did of this. Oh, geez, that was really off. I actually have way too big of a brush for this, to tell the truth. What you can also do for this, and I really should have done this in the beginning, uh, is you can select this right here, make a couple moves here, and then you can go to edit and warp it so it's more accurate. So you don't have to worry about getting the clone tool exactly perfect. I'm probably going to do that again right here. I should have just done this in the beginning. Select right here. Alright, now I'll just warp it a little bit. Alright, well, we still got to cover up the rest of Carmela's foot here. We really didn't do. I really didn't do that much. This is very tedious, guys. I've done this many times before, especially in design school, where I've had to cover up parts of photos because if any of you are interested in being graphic designers, you honestly don't do much sports stuff, first of all. And um, in design school, we you have to take a photography class and you have to edit photos. And you do a lot of this crap where you're constantly cloning images. You're cloning, uh, taking things out of imagery to make them look better. I mean, oh man. I'm not doing a fantastic job on this. I'm kind of rushing through it. For the same reason, I only have 15 minutes to do a tutorial and I'm already 10 minutes through it. But make sure you do spend time on getting these accurate because honestly, it's a big difference between a good design and a bad one. 
like look I got two lines now at least now we only got one all right so now we kind of morph them off the court now we have to get them out of this background and this is a pain in the neck and this is why if you ever noticed in a lot of really good designers artwork the crowd is normally faded out so oh I really didn't explain what I just did there so you just select a portion of the crowd that can be kind of proportional to over here so what I did is look that doesn't look right at all so let's select like up here in the luxury box because this is kind of luxury box ish bring it down oh I ran out of space oh no that is not what I want at all alright that doesn't look too awful LeBron should be a little bit easier at least up top So you don't have to be too accurate with the crowd because you're going to see what we're going to do with them in a little bit here, which will make it a little bit more easier to work with. Oh, shit. Yeah, not my best job on this. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, way off, way off. Oh, I hate Spike Lee. I'm sorry for any Knicks fans, but I am a huge Celtics fan, and I cannot stand this dude. Oh, man, that is way off, too. Clone stamp tool is not on my A-game tonight. Alright, so now that we have, oh, that was terrible, uh, now that we have kind of cropped them all out, Carmelo and LeBron, so you went from that to this, what you want to do now is we're going to merge all these layers, so control E after you select them all, whoops, control W, and you're going to take your uh, lasso tool here, and you're going to select this outer side of the court. Layer copy, so you're only going to copy that. And you're going to go to your filter and your blur and your glossy and blur. And you want to blur it enough to where you can't really see the detail, but it still looks fairly realistic. So there you go, you kind of got a nice blur. And once you add players, this, it won't be as noticeable. And what I also do is I take a, a dust. I don't know how many people have this downloaded. Uh, if not, I would recommend trying to find it. I think I forgot where I got this. But there's a dust particle brush. And what I do is I take either a black or a white one. And I just put particles all here. Just a, a lot of particles. Just so that you can't really notice the background. And then you blur it. And it takes away from kind of the really bad crowd and I'm telling you if you ever look at any of the guys any of the really good designers they don't the crowd if you ever notice it's totally blurred out you can't see any of it yeah see I did a much better job on on the one I did before than this but that's kind of how you would cry, uh, clone tool the a nice background like this. Like I said, my mock-up was much better. It looks much more accurate than this. But, um, you know, practice with it and try to make your own backgrounds. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to give you this background unless you do it yourself. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't like giving out backgrounds. And um, I hope you learned from this. If you have any questions, feel free to post below. I'm sorry I did not do my best job using the tool itself. I hope I did a good job explaining it. But thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram, Players in Green. Thanks again for watching, guys.